this is Aaron Jones. You're watching Loud TV. Congratulations, because uh, Mercy is uh, in the charts, number yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, it's number one on the charts this week. It's a pretty incredible feeling. Yeah, it was definitely, I mean, a lot, I, I you know, this this week was a very emotional one. You know, I found myself in, in overwhelmed with emotion, just, just in thinking of the journey to get there. It really was what it was. You know, being number one is, is a great honor. Definitely, you know, filled my heart with joy to be number one, but I, it just... The emotions hit me because of what I'd gone through to get to this point. Everything from being a little kid to this point now, you know, and just the fact that I, I'd created a legacy for my family to live off of that wasn't one that was based in poverty or despair, you know, for the first time. I think it was really beautiful. We did. We, I had a previous band and it was uh, Aaron Jones and the Way, which is a really great, a great project. And, you know, at the time, um, we had no idea what we were, we were even doing. I mean, we were a jam band just trying to make it happen. Um, and so this... Over time, I, you know, I decided to take on the solo act. And so just all this to get here, I mean, it, it definitely is a culmination of working with those cats and, you know, that I mean, I've, I've talked to some of the guys that have played with me over the years and everyone's just so happy and proud that this moment's finally come. So the the new team is uh, Martin and Scott around you? Right? Uh, so the, for this particular song, Martin and Scott uh, were the ones that were uh, the co-writers in the song, which was an amazing experience. Um, you know, we had a chance to sit and, um, you know, in, in this room and you no know, mercy came, came about in literally two days, you know, we walked in the room and two days later we had this song and, uh, we, we literally just took it from the demo and then put it out, um, essentially. Uh, and it was just the power and the magic of the song that kind of saw us through and little did we know we had a number one hit on our hands. So here we are, you know? Yeah. I, I think to me, the, the grunge is definitely, uh, it's present, but it's not the only thing, you know what I mean? It's not like, uh, I, I didn't go in thinking I'm going to write a grunge record. I think, um, growing up in Seattle in the time period that I was growing up in, in the nineties, it was just such an influence. I mean, when you're surrounded by grunge and Seattle sound at the time, it seeps into your pores, you know? And so, um, as I grew and as I learned as, a, as an artist and, and a guitarist, those things kind of just came out of me. But I don't, I don't know that it was ever something that I was deliberately trying to make happen. I think it just kind of happened because of the legacy of the sound of where I'm from. In your uh, last message um, uh, when, uh, about your, your song, Mercy, uh, you thank your uh, family and your parents that I think you have known very well. I think. Yeah. Um, so what was the the yeah the, the message through the this uh, topic? Um, so my my message uh, through through that was just almost you know I've I've talked about this before. My my parents never had a chance to see me play. Um, they both were battling their inner demons their, pretty much their whole lives from life to death, and um, so that they never knew that that one of their kids was going to grow up and and be what I am today. You know, and so. I felt it was so important, not even just to, to dedicate this this record to them, but even just this number one single. I mean, that, this is this is their kid, and regardless of whether they had enough love in themselves to be healthy uh, or enough to to be the the kind of parents that a kid needs, uh, it was important to to show them that level of respect and that level of thanks to the the, the cats that didn't know me, those those my parents that never knew what I was to become. Yeah. So, and um, so I've read that you. You have been uh, educated by your aunt, mm -hmm. and uh, I think you you spent a, a lot of time in uh, in churches. In uh, yeah, yeah. And so you you have a reference actually in uh, one of your video clip uh, about uh, this church. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we can feel a uh, a priest very severe, severe man, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I um. You know, spirituality has always been the base of of uh, of me. I mean, in my my whole beginnings. I mean, especially in the situation I was in, I think a lot of people turn to the church to find some sort of salvation, some sort of redemption in their life. And um, for me, I think that was definitely the case early on in my life. Um, although as I grew older, I kind of turned away from traditional religion and started to really encompass more more of different things I learned from multiple different religions into my life, you know. So um, I don't really consider myself much of a religious person anymore as I am spiritual, but the, those humble beginnings in the church are something that definitely uh, echoes in my music. And those are themes you'll find in and out of my music, my relationship with my spirituality, my relationship with the concept of God and what that means to me is, is present in all my music. And what about your religion with, uh, we can see the, the flag? 
of the USA. Mm -hmm. of this, uh, and this album is called, uh, yeah, Child of the States. Yeah. Uh, is it the Child of the USA? And uh, what's your, what's your, what's the link with uh, your country? Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I've talked about this a few times before, I think, and where um, Child of the State was supposed to be kind of a multi layered meaning, right? Very, um, and that I, I am the child, I'm, I'm like an all American kid, I'm a US kid, uh, I'm the child of the state of Washington, I'm a child of Seattle, I'm a child of, you know, all of these things. I'm, I'm, I'm a child of the state of the world, you know. So, child of the state was really, um, the title was really encompassing all those things. In my relationship with America, you know, I, I talk about this um, sometimes where it's like, I think I think Black Americans are some of the most patriotic people on the planet, you know, in, in terms of yeah. uh, where we come from, and that, you know, we here we are. We're, we're never really dealt the the most fair card uh, for most people, you know. We're, we're whether consciously or unconsciously, we're seen as, as these second class citizens, but yet we are. We still hold true that this is the greatest country on the planet, and we're we're going to be here to fight for our country, to defend our country. We're going to be here to. Um, to represent our country in every way possible, that pride in our country, even even when we are are, are treated um, unfairly, you know. So I think that that was a, a big deal for me was to to install that patriotism in, in this record. The other topics, I think you 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 deal with uh, toxic relations. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know the the band Apocalyptica from Finland. You know, they oh, play never heard they those cats, with, man. And they play with the cellos, you know, metal with cellos. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm excited. They, they played a song called Shadow Maker. And it's about it's about people who are too negative. You know, it's about people that are uh, black cloud, you know? Yeah. So I think you, you have the, the same topic in your album. Yeah, very very much so. Um, you know, there are a number of different energies that, that we all come in contact with at any, any given moment in our life. And those energies can drive our focus, you know? So, um um, whether they be negative or positive. And so it's it's kind of, you know, a lot of this record also has to deal with that that push and pull of duality, right? Where, you know, it's like the good versus evil, the dark versus light, this versus that. Um, and so for me, my concept with these energies, the negative energies and the positive energies are that it's never really been about one or the other. other. Duality is, is, is fundamentalist thinking, I think. Um, and it's it was always about um, realizing that these things, typically the things that we, we view as this or that are actually different degrees of the same thing. And so um, this record for me and, and a lot of these songs were about the, the contemplation of those energies, you know, and what it means to discover that, you know. There is a good vibe, good energy uh, with the female voice in Take Me Away. The girl says, don't give up. Mm -hmm. uh, who's the one who told you that the most? My auntie was the one that told me that the most. My auntie, that that voice actually represents my aunt um, because she was the only mother figure really I ever had, the only mom I ever had in my life, man. Um, and so that voice to me was always supposed to represent um, her in the back of my mind. Those those times where you know I, I was dealing with my mom's issues and like and she and watching her basically just um, kill herself through drugs, alcohol, or, or the life that she was living and. Um, she was the one that kept pushing me and telling me just to keep moving forward and never give up. So that was that was definitely my auntie. Uh, I've read that the you you will play very very soon. There is a U.S. tour in uh, yeah this fall in September. Yeah. And then and then Europe next year. Yeah, yeah, man, I'm, I'm hitting Europe next year. Um, and the, and that may even be by the end of this year. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, there's there's some hope on the horizon in terms of the, the pandemic kind of coming. Uh, tapering down and allowing me to, to open up and, and get back on the stage, which is where my heart and soul are at, man. So I can't, I really can't wait. I'm looking forward to it.